will discuss setting up RAID modes on a two-drive Buffalo link station or terror station NAS device. To do this, we need to get into the admin UI, which is best done through a Buffalo's NAS Navigator software, which will probably already be installed on your PC or Mac. You can double-click on that uh, and access your device once it finishes its scan. Alternatively, you can type in the IP address or host name directly into a web browser and log in that way. Uh, once it shows up, you can right-click on it and click the Open Web Settings button, and a browser will open and automatically point you to the admin UI. The default username for a root login is admin, and then the password is password. So unless you've already changed that, you can type in admin and password. That'll log you into your user interface for the link station or terror station device. The unit that we're using is a two-drive link station device, but the terror station process will basically be exactly the same. Um, you'll go to the system option to get into the disk and uh, RAID mode, and then select the storage tab. Uh, and this will bring up all of your disk and RAID information. So this is a two-drive unit. So you can see both of our uh, two disk drives in here. Now, by default, this particular device ships in RAID 0. So most of our users actually ship to RAID 1 because it provides you that uh, disk mirroring redundancy that RAID 0 does not. So it protects your data a lot more. So actually, to start, we need to delete the existing RAID array. Uh, and all Buffalo NAS devices do ship with a default RAID array. So you will have to delete them if you want to change the mode. To do that, you will select on the array in the RAID array area. So you can scroll down here. And this device has one RAID array. It's RAID 0. Go ahead and click on that. And then uh, we have this option to delete the RAID array. So by clicking on that, we can start that process. Now, I'll warn you, as well as all the screens will, that deleting a RAID array will delete all the information on your disk so, or your disks. So if you do this, uh, you better have a backup of the data that's on there or make sure that you don't need any of the data that's on there. Uh, you will have to type in the confirmation number, which is just a random number to make sure you definitely want to uh, blow out the RAID array. Once doing that, it'll verify the number, and then it'll start the uh, deletion of the RAID array. Once it's deleted, we'll go ahead and create, uh, create a new one. So this process may take about a minute. OK, now that the process is done, uh, you'll be sent back to the default folder setup area, and you'll see that there's no shares there anymore. Um, you'll also see that both disks are in raw native mode. So now we need to create the RAID array, uh, which is actually done the same exact uh, way as we just deleted it. Go into the System tab, and then click on the Storage tab. And you'll see that there'll be no RAID arrays present in the RAID array box. So there is this default one that's basically not configured. So we'll click on this one, which is called Array 1 in this case. It'll scan for all of your disks. We'll use this drop-down menu to toggle which RAID mode. So in this case, we want to go to RAID 1. So we'll select RAID 1, and then we can individually check uh, the disks, or we can use this master uh, check all. We'll press the Create RAID Array button. Uh, we'll verify that we want to do that across disks 1 and 2. And we'll type in the random verification code again. And it'll take, again, a moment or two for the RAID Array to set up. Um, so you'll go through a process to set it up. So now the RAID array is created. You can see we have one array that's, uh, in this case, uh, just under a terabyte. And these have terabyte drives in them. Uh, you'll also notice you're back in the folder setup. Uh, because we erased all the information on the array, there will not be any shared data there. So Maybe a good first step would be to create uh, the, the default share again, or, or whatever share that you want. I will advise that uh, after a RAID array is created, the Buffalo device in the background will do a RAID uh, scan, just to make sure the integrity of the RAID array is there. That does happen in the background, and you can continue to use your device uh, as you'd like. You can uh, inspect the, the status of that by going back to the system storage option and looking at your RAID array, which will be in a... Uh, in a mode called checking. Uh, and if you scroll far to the right, you can see what progress that's at. So again, this runs in the background, and it may have a minimal impact on your device's performance uh, until it's complete. But uh, you can more or less ignore that. Uh, and uh, once it's done, the uh, yellow light on the front of the device that might be blinking will, uh, will also shut off. And that just makes sure that your RAID array is set up. So that's how to set up a RAID array on a Buffalo 2-drive NAS system.